but 48 countries in total, according to the data from the United Nations. Asia is the largest continent in the Earth. It has long been the home of most of the human's population. It was a cradle of civilization. It has witnessed events, recorded or not. It has watched people's lives and heard their stories. A continent as big as Asia is not only rich in its population and natural resources, it is also wealthy in stories, real, fictional, poetic. It's a crossroad of literature. One thing is for sure, Asian literature is diverse and vast. It's as diverse as the people that live in it, and the selections are as vast as the 48 countries under its territory. As we already know by now, literature reflects the life, times, culture, and tradition of the people where, where it came from. So we find traces of the people's identity in their literary pieces. But what is Asian literature? Where do we draw the line, you ask? How do we identify it? Or what are the characteristics of it? Thing is, even when Asia is a one big continent, it's kind of hard to pinpoint what exactly is Asian literature. By the name itself, of course, Asian literature refers to the big body of literary texts produced from Asia by Asians, for Asians, and for anyone else in the world. There is no single quality that would encompass all of Asian literature, from past to the present. Especially considering that there are 48 countries and each of those countries have their own stories to tell. However, it is also good to take note that the study and survey of Asian literature reminds us of the authentic identity that the East has before the Westerners conquered parts of it. Moreover, it is also good to point out that most of the post-colonial works were also about finding one's identity and how colonialism has impacted the authenticity of their identity. When it comes to looking at Asian literature, some look at it into portions rather than the whole. Asian literature could be grouped and divided based on its territory. East Asian literature, which includes Chinese literature, Japanese, Korean, and also Mongolian literature. South Asian literature, um, we also have Southeast Asian literature, which of course includes Philippine literature. Uh, we also have a Central Asian literature and the West Asian literature, which includes the Persian literature, Arabic literature, Jewish, and Turkish literature. Despite Asia being rich in literature, we cannot deny that the literature of the West still remains dominant and more popularly known and recognized. With this, it's also quite interesting to take note of how the West views the East and how this view affected the image of the East as well as its literature and people's general perception of the East. Edward Said, a Palestinian American professor of literature in Columbia University, published a book called Orientalism in 1978, which elaborated the concept of Orientalism that depicts how the West views the East, most specifically the Middle East, but also includes Asian and African societies as exotic, barbaric, backward, and inferior and therefore needed saving and help from the more advanced people of the West. This idea was what the Westerners used to rationalize their colonialism. Orientalism is an idea that could be seen on paintings, photographs, and literary pieces that present the East as having a backward culture, sometimes to the point of being savage and dangerous. For example, the paintings of European artists in the 19th and early 20th century show the Middle East as a mysterious place of sand, harems, and belly dancers, an image that stayed until our contemporary times. In literature, for example, Western writers tend to portray the East as magically dangerous and exotic. Thing is, these representations thwarted the image of the Orientals to the people in general. 
Speaking about dominance, there are also various literature in Asia that are probably more known to the world than the others. For example, when we talk about Asia, China would always be on the top of the countries that would occur in your mind. Perhaps what made Chinese literature also influential were the teachings of Confucius. Confucius could be referred to as one of the world's greatest philosophers. The Analects of Confucius is a book that is composed of the sayings and teachings of Confucius gathered by his followers. The teachings emphasize the importance of morality. And I guess that's one of the most known literary pieces from China. Angel literature is also quite popular area of city when it comes to Asian literature. Their widely known literary pieces center on their beliefs and religion. Some of their earlier literary pieces also took in different forms and genres such as erotic and devotional lyrics, court poetry, plays, and narrative folk tales. The early literature was also written mostly in Sanskrit, the language which they believed was used by gods. Two of their most important and popular literary pieces are the epics Ramayana and Mahabharata, which were both reflections of the ancient Indian background and Hinduism. Japanese literature is also widely known. Most popular literary form from Japan would probably be its poetry, most specifically the haiku. As you probably know, haiku is a Japanese poetry that is only composed of three lines having five, seven, five syllables respectively. Another popular form of the Japanese poetry is tanka, which is a little longer compared to haiku as it has five lines with its first and third line having five syllables and the rest having seven. Japanese literature is also known because of its drama, as it is considered as the most favorite way of entertainment of the Japanese in the ancient times. One popular form of drama in Japan is a no theater. It's a kind of drama that relies on music and dance, with its language greatly poetic. What's also distinct with No is that all characters are portrayed by male actors and that the main character in the story wears a mask which, which suggests the audience the kind of character being portrayed. Another popular drama in ancient Japan is the Kobuki play, which was originally acted only by women. However, after women were banned from joining theatrical plays, it became a drama enacted by men. Kabuki is now known to be a stage play that is highly stylized as it includes elaborate costumes and makeup. Even the actor's acting could be elaborate or should be elaborate and exaggerated as well. Well, I guess those three are the most popularly known or the most dominant literary pieces which came from Asia. And if we are going to study Asian literature carefully, the whole semester might not even be enough to tackle all the literature coming from this 48 countries under the Asian continent. This is looking at the Asian literature in a general perspective, and there's more to the little details that have to be looked at if one's interested in this area of study.